Brain Talk is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually going to be sent by the student. I got lost in the mail for a short while. Uh, something about being intercepted by uh, probably like some kind of spy organization. They want to get their hands on it. These things are really rare, I hear, like these unicorn horns. Um, so I'm not surprised that they're trying to steal my unicorn toy from Pine. Yeah, um, I, I actually, I, I did get mine, um, but it did come from some guy in sunglasses and a black van. Uh, I, I have been playing Red Death Kit, though, ever since, and it's it's been an absolute blast. It, I can hear everything. It can hear everything. It tells me everything. It, it speaks to me. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mine only allows me to telepathically read people's minds. So. Oh, yeah, you got to get the firmware update for it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, uh, didn't see you there. Um, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, we uh, we took a month off, but um, this is Pine Talk. I'm Justin, uh, but you might have seen me shitposting under the name Porky of the Pine. Uh, we definitely weren't talking about anything there. Yeah, uh, so we took a month off because we had uh, stuff going down, uh, notably unicorn toy shipments, um, which if you followed the blog post, uh, you'll probably know what that uh, means. Otherwise, you probably think that we're just crazy, which is fair enough. So, so yeah, you know me as the uh, normal person called brian uh also known by 33yn2 um yeah so there, there hasn't been we were talking about this as we were writing the script for this episode there hasn't been too much wild news in the realm of the pine phone or the pine phone pro however in general with all of pine 64 products there has been a good amount of news including a brand new product release um so let's get into all of that with rapid fire Sailfish OS has released version 4.4.0. This includes improved Android app support, loads of new features, so many in fact that the list is way too long for me to rapid fire, so instead we're just going to throw a link into the show notes so you can see a detailed list of all of the changes. In addition, Sailfish OS has gained support for GPS on the PinePhone. Towboot has officially added support for the PinePhone Pro in release 2021.10-004. Speaking of Towboot, Mobian has moved to Towboot so that now they can create more device-independent images. The BigTorg custom firmware version 0.6.1 has released. Now if the modem receives a message while you are in a call, it'll actually give you a text-to-speech voice instead of just plain text. The Huang Tram Linux dev Dankt has been releasing many videos showing off the Pine Note, including running a Windows XP virtual machine and playing Doom, and the graphics still have a long way to go before they become consumer ready, but the progress on this device continues to impress me. Well, it is pretty damn impressive, although you shouldn't expect to be able to play Doom on it because the graphics drivers needing improvements means that it looks like a block of pixels on your screen, really. Yeah, it's, the Doom isn't playable at all on it. No, nothing is playable, really. Uh, you're gonna a text adventure is. Yeah, you you could play Zork uh, or uh, Zork two or Zork, Zork three. three. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. There have been new improvements to the keyboard driver in the kernel, which now improve charging behavior. Box 86 version 0.2.6 and Box 64 version 0.1.8 were released as of the day of recording with lots of small bug fixes and improvements to get better Steam and Steam Play compatibility. The developer behind Box 86 and Box 64 recently released some benchmarks comparing these two user space emulators to that of Fex Emu and QEMU User, as well as Apple's Rosetta 2. The results showed that Box86 and Box64 were winning against all but Rosetta and by a pretty large margin. We'll leave links for you to view the full article for yourself. So, KDE Plasma has been seeing some huge improvements in the desktop realm, uh, particularly because the Steam Deck has been you know, pushing the developers to really improve things and get things uh, going for Wayland support in particular. Uh, they've fixed tons of bugs. They've added a bunch of really, really handy features and optimizations to the desktop side. But on the mobile front, while it's true that Plasma Mobile still is rather buggy, it's missing some features like being able to pick up an incoming call with an over, like a nice overlay that allows you to press the hang up button when you're done and you know di press in numbers, you know the dial pad, uh, so you can do dial tones. That kind of thing, uh, unfortunately, is not implemented yet, nor is like an alarm overlay or anything like that. So you you have to unlock the screen and then tap the notification um, to, uh, you know, interact really. I mean, you can pick up the call. There's a hang up uh, and answer button. But then after that, you have to unlock it to get into there so you can hang it up and do whatever, uh, which is sucky. But 
they have done a lot of uh, uh, bug fixes and improvements aside. Um, so while you know it's still a little lacking in some spots and it's buggy in certain areas, uh, they've made tons of improvements in terms of the fluidity of the animations uh, in the shell. The shell has tons of new features now. It has a toggle for the virtual keyboard on top of the caffeine mode and uh, the uh, suspend timeout uh, button in the uh, quick settings. So now you can uh, basically turn off the virtual keyboard so it doesn't pop up, which is useful if you're using the physical keyboard. Although, it, it, to be fair, the physical keyboard should be auto-detected and hidden anyways by Plasma, but, you know, regressions happen and then it doesn't get detected. So it's good to have the button as a backup. And on top of that, uh, they've done a lot of improvements to the settings menus. Uh, they've uh, changed around the UI for it so it looks nicer and it's more consistent with the rest of Plasma Mobile. But they've also fixed a couple issues with the UI. Uh, and they've added uh, the ability to reorder the quick settings menu, which is huge. And you now have a button to uh, control switching from uh, swipe gestures to the button-based gestures where you have the bottom bar with the three buttons. Uh, so it is coming along. Uh, they also fixed the spacebar MMS uh, UI, which had issues with the icons being really small, the images that you preview being tiny, and then there was uh, some other visual issues. Um, so while Plasma Mobile is definitely not daily driver ready, I would say at this point, and it probably won't be for a long time at this rate, it is really nice to see it getting some love in regards to its ui and a lot of the long-standing bugs finally getting fixed and hopefully it, it picks up pace and it can improve a lot more but with that out of the way Mawai shell has seen lots of bug fixes and new features as, as you know it sh it is not released yet it is a alpha uh release that just came out uh before now we've only seen basically like a prototype of it uh, the alpha release has basically added the features that were just basically placeholders originally, like the Bluetooth toggle is now added. Uh, it now has a cellular network control. Uh, it now has brightness control that is working and a sound uh, control that is actually working. Uh, it also added a lot of new uh, shadows and effects to the UI so it looks nicer and it feels smoother. And they added adaptive color to the wallpaper settings UI basically so you can set up a wallpaper and it will automatically figure out the color of that wallpaper and then apply it to your UI. So you get a nice colorful UI that matches your wallpaper theme. Uh, they also improved the media player uh, card that sits in the notification menu. So it looks a lot nicer, it works better now. And they fixed a ton of other issues as well. It's still nowhere near daily driver ready or even really ready for use at all because it still has issues with crashing. Uh, there's a couple major crash bugs that will call it to just go kaput. So until those are fixed, it really isn't all that useful for anything more than exploration, unfortunately. Uh, and I mean, even after those are fixed, I'm sure there's still a lot more issues than that. Uh, it, it is in a really early stage. It's like an alpha. I think there's uh, another five or six months they have on the, the plan. I'm off the top of my head. I, I could be completely kaputing that, but uh, we have a couple months at least before they release a stable or what is considered a stable release. It will, it will be interesting to see how this comes along. It is a very interesting and beautiful U Lin mobile Linux UI project. And I think it will be a great alternative to Fosh and Plasma Mobile. So with that out of the way, though, a quick little fun tidbit is that the Pine64 EU store, which we've talked about in the last Pine talk, is going to be getting stickers and t-shirts as merch. So when you buy a Pine64 product from the store, you could add a t-shirt or stickers to your cart. Um, Lucas also talked about adding a, a limited run of unicorn stickers, which he did as the April Fool's joke where for the Pine uh, Pods and Pine uh, uh, pine Buds. He had the uh, a Pine Talk microphone sticking out of a unicorn as the horn. Um, so there will be a limited run of t-shirts for that. It's not clear how that will work out, if it will be a... Uh, if it will be something that you buy as you check out or if it will be something that you get as part of checking out as like the first 200 people to order kind of thing. But we'll have to see how that works out. So let's talk about that Pine sound. Um, I'm actually really interested in it. Uh, I, I know I was talking to you before the podcast and I've talked to Zed at length about it. It was when I was at his house actually that the idea came to me. 
Um, by the way, for those of you who don't know, Zed is our editor. Uh, he's also a personal friend of mine. Um, but he had a original iPod, or a, it's, it was one of the earlier generations at the very least, uh, plugged into his computer, and he entered into his BIOS. To, uh, uh, I think he was trying to boot into Windows instead of Linux or something like that, or or the other way around. But the iPod showed up as a boot device, and that <laughs> inspired me to think of I know nothing about operating system development by the way um, but to develop some sort of mp3 player or iPod OS which would be minimal and exist on the iPod and then you could plug it into a computer and boot from that mp3 player and then get a desktop version of that OS um, I don't know how well that would work or anything especially having to consider storage and all that <laughs> but i don't know so that would not work in terms of just plugging it in and then it would run the same operating system on a computer but you could have something it, where it stores a separate operating system specifically for the pc that gives you a similar interface yeah that, that'd be more what it is yeah and that like and it's in that case, I could see some merit to the idea of making the uh, Pine Pod being able to be plugged into a computer and then it acts as a USB flash drive kind of thing. So you could store files on it and boot from it, even like a Linux distro, you know, flash an ISO onto there like you would to test a, a, a distro out and then boot off of it and boom, you've got a live USB running off of your Pine Pod. Uh, that would be interesting. And also being able to uh, uh, still use it as a music player at the same time as storing files and flashing it for booting on a computer would be pretty neat. But I would uh, that would probably be doable with just like separate, uh, you know, partitions, like have a, f a factory partition set up for uh, the music storage and then, you know, a separate partition for whatever the hell else you want to screw with without, you know, the two mixing with each other. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, that that is something that I actually would be on board with uh, tinkering with and figuring out learning just from the ground up. Um and uh, so, uh, Lucas, this is my application to uh, get a Pine Sound dev board. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that's all of the experience that I have. But um, also another idea, which I th threw into the, the notes, and you didn't really say anything about it, uh, but the idea of forking Infinitime into a MP3 player OS. Yeah, so I could actually see them doing that. I wouldn't be surprised if the Pine Pod comes out and then, you know, JF announces that he's already started working on a uh, Pine Pod Infinitime based UI for it, um, you know, using the uh, the same OS and everything in the back end. But uh, we'll have to see. I vote that the name is Infinisound. My understanding is that the product was already, like the, the Pine Pod and uh, Pine Buds were already actually an off the shelf, uh, you know, solution that they purchased the rights to and and like it never actually came out and it wasn't manufactured uh so they purchased the rights to it and now they're going to manufacture it and uh release it but the software for it is all done already so they just have to you know get it flashed to them and manufacture them and then boom and then from there the community can improve the software and do whatever the heck they want with it yeah and that would be a blast i i do think that i know every now and then there are a handful of people that are actually just looking for a mp3 player they don't want a phone or they don't want a fancy mp3 player like they have now or might as well be a phone yeah um they, they just want like a traditional mp3 player and um it's i remember actually looking for one a few years ago um, because i was in a very specific situation where i needed one and i ended up having to resort to just jailbreaking or re-jailbreaking my third generation ipod touch because that just proved to be the best option um, so if we had something with open firmware and or open software, everything, uh, open everything, um, or as open as we can get, then I'd be thrilled, of course, and I think everyone else probably would be too. That this it would be just like how they're saying the um, the Pine Time and Pine Cell are kind of these side projects that are completely run by the community, but then also are gathering attention from non Linux people and. Um, the outside world and to the extent that the pine soul is even being counterfeited now i would be interested to see something like that with the pine pod where it's people who have no interest in free and open source software are suddenly getting onto it just because it's a good product yeah and i mean i i think the biggest thing for this uh the is the potential for 
the community to really pick it up and do some really crazy stuff with the software on it because like unlike other brands where they give you the software ahead of time and it's locked down and you can't change it at all this is going to have uh you know both the pine uh, pod and pine buds and uh you know in particular uh my thought process is with the pine buds you'll be able to do really crazy stuff with it for example uh with the pine buds i could see people improving the firmware to where it could be used as like not just headphones with the equalizing and all that but on top of that have a virtual assistant on tap basically you, it would sync up with your your uh, pine phone and then you say a code word the headphones would detect that and then it would connect to the phone well i mean it's already connected but it would ping the phone basically to get an answer out of it and then send it up through audio saying like the reply is you know uh kind of like a virtual assistant and then yeah add that in conjunction with the possibility for making it into hearing aids i can imagine it you know okay so the possibility is you have the headphone firmware you have a, a separate firmware for the ai assistant you have a separate firmware for you know the hearing aids but i could see the community taking it up and making it so everything's combined so you have a, a, an assistant built into your earphones that connects to your phone to get all the answers and then you also have hearing aids built in and then you have the normal media player with uh, you know functionality so you could listen to music still with the equalizing and uh, sound uh, canceling we also got to mention that it can connect to your uh, pinecone smart speaker of course yeah but that will be sold separately of course <laughs> yeah uh but yeah actually on that topic too um they like they mentioned using it as a hearing aid but what about also his hearing protection? Yeah, I, I don't I, know too much about that, but as far as I know, the more advanced ones, it actually it, it uses a microphone to pick up the loud sound and it mutes it for you. Yeah, so I think Lucas mentioned there will be like three microphones inside of these things. So it, it is, and that's how the, uh, you know, the equalizing and uh, the sound canceling will work is that it uses the microphones to detect outside interference and, and like what the ambient volume levels and whatnot are. And then it, you know, uses an algorithm to calculate you know what it needs to change frequency wise to cancel out the outside audio and uh yeah it's it's pretty neat that's it's also insanely complex it's pretty cool to think about um but yeah, yeah. i don't know if i to be fair i don't know if i would want to rely on it for hearing protection uh i don't know how reliable even the you know samsung buds for example i'm not sure that those for example have that but i'm just saying if they did i'm not sure how reliable those are at doing sound canceling for protecting your your hearing uh, but, uh, you know, the hearing aid and the AI assistant, that, that kind of thing, which, you know, won't hurt you if it goes wrong or something, then I don't see a problem with that. I definitely wouldn't want to be going to a, a shooting range, for example, and then be using these things yeah, and then they shut off or they bug out. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. boom, you, you blow out your eardrum. Well, maybe not blow them out, but you hurt your hearing and you start, you get tendonitis, you know? Yeah. You start hearing, uh, hearing double. Um, yeah. I mean, I've been there before. <laughs> yeah i mean just imagine you're using it for protecting your ears and then it's like low battery and then it shuts off i mean that is one thing to whoever starts um to anyone who is developing uh firmware for the, the pine buds when the battery's low please don't have to remind me every five seconds because that's the reason why i hate bluetooth headphones because battery's always low and it's just like yeah. i can't it's like okay battery's low i'm gonna i'll charge it whenever i can but it's like as soon as I hear battery low, okay, I can't use them anymore. My because it's just it's gonna remind me every ten seconds or five seconds. My uh, bone conducting headphones, the aftershocks I have, uh, start doing like this really annoying voice, low battery, and like a, a female voice, and it's just super annoying. It's like shut up, I get it. Yeah, it's like I I understand like maybe once every few minutes or like a minute or two or like you're speeding up as it gets closer to dying, but it's you know 20 percent battery low every five ten seconds and it's well then i don't get to listen to music anymore so that's why i still use wireless wired headphones uh, and that's also because i don't want to spend the money on quality bluetooth headphones that have a decent battery life but i would spend that money on pine buds considering the amount of potential that they have and also because i am uh i don't want to not what's the word it's not shill but uh I don't know. I dump all my money into Pine64 products. I would absolutely love to see these things have... Uh, well, first of all, I hope they have a really nice quality case, but also on top of the case, I would love to see them have uh, like the rainbow-colored uh, Pine64 logo or maybe even the unicorn 
you know, as just a cool little uh, like thing to distinguish it for one of their new products, you know. That'd be great if they released like a like even with like a somewhat quality unicorn sticker on it. Yeah. Just for like the, like the first run. Or include that like I think the big the the nicest thing would be the rainbow uh you know pine cone because that just looks really sweet and on a white background yeah. that looked gorgeous I bet. Yeah. But uh, we'll have to see. How, I wonder what the price will be like because they they didn't talk about that. So I yeah I am really curious about the price because. It's like when I first heard about them, it's like, oh, Pine 64 Bluetooth headphones. I was like, oh, they're probably going to be around like the $30, $50 range, just kind of thinking the um, the quality or just kind of thinking like Pine 64 products tend to be on the uh, lower end of price. And then also it's, but they're Bluetooth headphones, they're going to have something with them. And also Bluetooth 5. Um, But then it's like with all of this, I could actually see them being over $100. Yeah. And I mean, also, if they're cheaper than that, if they're like 50 bucks, for example, are they going to be any good? That's the biggest thing, you know, because if, okay, they might have a great audio chip, but if they like are cheaping out on certain parts to lower the cost bracket, not because they want to cheap out to take your money, but because they cheap out to, you know, try and make it more accessible to people, then that will mean it might not be as comfortable. It might not have as good a battery life, you know, that kind of thing. And that's important. So with these kind of things, I would rather them do like a hundred and twenty dollar price than to do a fifty dollar price and then have a lot of issues with the quality. Uh, which you know you could go and buy a hundred dollar pair of uh, or like a, a you could go and buy like a say a sixty dollar pair of uh, uh, earbuds right in one of the a set, but they're not going to sound as good as like a hundred and twenty dollar pair in most cases. I mean I think I've heard of one brand that did sound pretty decent, but yeah I mean you pay for extra usually for better quality not always but in a lot of cases that's the case you know you get better quality plastics so it's and better shape and ergonomics or better software um yeah i mean there's a lot of factors that go into it just besides the audio chip that can you know give you clear crisp audio and how many microphones you have are for example are those microphones going to be really good quality ones that can pick out you know low frequencies and stuff so that way they can best cancel out the uh, sound that when you're doing sound canceling and equalization i'm actually looking at the pine sound board right now and i noticed that there the the board itself has uh at least five sets of i don't know what, what exactly you'd call that i don't know enough about circuit boards uh, but it, there's it says mic one mic two mic three mic four and mic five uh, which i do find that really interesting i guess that's okay i get that's printer uh, connected to that uh the gpio yeah right under it or all the pins under it um but yeah uh in terms of cost i assuming that a pine pod does become a thing or something similar to it i wouldn't be surprised to see like a 30 dollar pine pod and like 100 dollar pine beds yeah i mean a uh i could see it being you know even a little more like maybe 50 bucks for the pine pod but it it still would be probably pretty reasonable i would say the, yeah, the, I, I and I do think it'd be cheaper than the headphones. Yeah, the headphones are going to be the most because they're small. I mean, and if they're not small, then they're probably not going to be very comfortable. That's the thing. That's why they're always so expensive is because they're very complicated pieces of tech. Like the, inside those tiny little earbuds have to be a battery and and head, uh, you know, the the speaker for the headphones, and you have to have multiple microphones packed in there plus logic so it can handle the Bluetooth connection and everything yeah. else. So. I mean, you can even just see in the picture that they included in the blog post with the, uh, the chip in one of them, and yeah, it's or the not the chip, the the yeah. board in one of them, including that, the chip. That's dense. Uh, it's it's a lot of stuff packed into one little yeah. tiny thing. Those from the picture, they do look a little chunky. To be fair, I, I wonder how. Yeah, but that that is a I know that is a style yeah. that exists, and that's kind of that that'd be my preferred style, really. But um, but yeah, I'd, I'd have to obviously see. What they're like in real life. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And also, I, I don't imagine the actual design is final. You know, one thing I, I I do think will be interesting is that if people don't like it, unlike the Pine Phone, where they can just resell it, it. If they don't like these, then they probably can't really resell them because nobody wants to buy used earphones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Especially in ear. But hey. Some people are desperate enough, especially if they turn out good. We'll see a, a, a market form on eBay, used headphones slightly, you know. Very used. Oh god, the very used ones have like a funky green ears wax in them. <laughs> I wonder if these will be waterproof as well. That's another thing to be. Ooh. I don't think they would be. 
yeah at I least mean, not officially yeah maybe water resistant at least though that would be yeah nice. yeah the, i think they can only say that they're splash resistant it's like the uh like the pine time because before or beyond that i think you have to get an official rating yeah. which costs a lot of money so outside of pine 64 stuff um i did want to talk about the new toy that i've been given um i was talking about being over at zed's house uh, earlier in the episode and zed will actually be coming over to my house as of or tomorrow as of the day of recording um and part of what he's going to be doing at my house is playing with this thing that i have been uh, given uh so i do a lot of volunteering outside of um the being involved in the pine 64 community and in one of the organizations that i volunteer for um i met this guy who uh, he and his son created a field server uh, per, pretty much with disaster relief and sort of those kind of emergency services in mind and they tried selling it to multiple local governments and um and state agencies and most of them or they, a handful of them bought them but for the most part they didn't want it and it wasn't because it was a good or it wasn't because it wasn't a good product it's because it ran linux and the IT guys were afraid of Linux, or they didn't know Linux, and they didn't want to know Linux, and all the older people who don't know anything about anything, uh, or anything about hardware at least, or technology, um, they're just generally afraid of Linux, so they just said no. But what it is, because I was reading the documentation, I haven't actually touched the actual, or I haven't actually turned on the machine, um, I've just seen it. It is a mini ITX computer that can be deployed anywhere that you have power in an internet connection and that can be generator power normal you know, plugging into a wall power um it's set up to be powered through anything and as long as you have an internet connection be it ethernet wi-fi or usb tethering with a phone you can then deploy it and once you deploy it it can it creates its own or has its uh, its own access points where it creates its own wi-fi network to where it then works as an intranet using Nextcloud to then share files, or primarily to share files and um, work on documents together. And the again, the general idea was for emergency services. So you deploy it at an incident command post and people based off of their jobs would have access to different maps or files or um, maybe a handful of people are working on a specific report about the situation and or keeping track of if it's some sort of disaster relief, uh, keeping track of resources, things like that. But I was reading the documentation, and I realized he told me it's a mobile server, but I didn't really think about the fact that this is, in fact, a full server that is in a mini ITX form factor. It's it's the processor, and it's a uh, Ryzen 2200G. Um, so it has an amount of power. Like it can be used for uh, for a good amount of stuff, and just using it for NextCloud and um you know that sort of file sharing isn't using it anywhere near to its full of potential and so i am now getting to play with this thing and figure out what else i can do with this to have or to pretty much set up an intranet for uh for this organization that i work with um and i'm actually really excited because i also uh another thing i forgot to mention with how amazingly made this thing is it has two hard drives in it that are the same exact size and rather than um extending the size of it you get the storage of one of them and the other one will mirror it so it's designed with the idea that if it ever were to fail or if one of them were if one of the hard drives were to ever fail you would never notice because it's just still using the same everything with the mirrored hard drive and um that it's again is focused towards disaster relief and making sure that nothing went wrong and it's just masterfully crafted and uh, I'm really happy to have it, and I'm going to be talking with the developer and uh, picking his brain on why he chose some of the software that he chose, but I think some of it's just, admittedly, he just didn't know Linux as well as uh, someone who might daily drive it. But yeah, um, I just wanted to talk about that, and I'm, I'm just really excited about it, and uh, maybe if there is enough of a, <laughs> a niche audience for it, we can get the Pinefield, a mobile server that is... The mobile server that pairs with your Pine phone. Well, it could pair with any phone, really. But yeah. It, oh, I, I also another thing with that I forgot to mention that it is it does have a firewall, um, and it, it 
the Wi-Fi network that it has is in fact a private network. Uh, so you are able to share all of your files um, securely, privately. Um, obviously it's Nextcloud, so um, the only people who are seeing it are the people who control the server and the people with user accounts and everything within it. It's cool stuff. And yeah, Pinefield. But I do imagine that Pine might have to talk with these guys about <laughs> the rights to it. I don't know how any of that works. I'm not a business person. For ten dollars, you can buy a Pine Field server. <laughs> it's just like a, it's a single A64 chip, like with a a Wi-Fi chip <laughs> hunkered onto it and nothing else. Not even any <laughs> yeah, any RAM. They it. just expect you to use the internal cache on the CPU. Yeah, that's the uh, that's what you get for ten dollars. Wonderful bargain. And for five hundred dollars, you get. A Quartz 64 doing that. Well, no, it would be a, it would be in tiers. So you'd go 10, 20, 30, 40. So then at the $40 tier, you yeah. have 4 gigs of RAM and you have a, an A64 uh, clocked to 2 gigahertz. You want more, then you got to pay more. Yeah. Obviously, it's going to be like $200 yeah, before you crack into the, uh, the RK33, uh, uh, what is it, 3368 three, or something like that. I don't know. It's before the... the the three, uh, the new three, three, five, six. I've always had a terrible time keeping track of them, so yeah. I couldn't tell you. Like basically, only slightly better yeah, than Pine the A sixty four. Not coming to a pine store near you. Not yet. Not not ever. Not I'll I'll have to beg enough. I'll I'll go to all of the board meetings. Yeah, because we all know that you sit in all those. <laughs> yeah. And we all know that Pine sixty four holds right. those. I mean, where else do you think the uh, idea of the pine cone came from? He said that they, they had that idea in 2020. That's when I initially posted the idea of a well, pine yeah. cone. Well, so yeah. Clearly yeah, their board that. meetings are uh, consistent of sitting on uh, Discord, watching what people say, and then being like, yeah, we're going to make <laughs> yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, you can see uh, Pine64 is a great uh, business strategy here. Just uh, steal other people's ideas and then make it happen and then let them uh, buy it from them and it yeah, works. It works great. No, I'm joking. Obviously, they make their own products, but who knows if they are inspired by the community? I mean, actually, they are definitely inspired by the community saying stuff. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, like with the Pine Phone, they changed some things around uh, during its early development because of what uh, developers that were involved with it were saying. Uh, not even just like design wise, but like also like, oh, I wish it had this ability to do this. Speaking of which, I do want to uh, very briefly shout out Thanos's Pine Crow Wave. Uh, because he does have a microwave that's running off of, I don't know what it's using. Is it a BL602 or something? Uh, but he's working on it. Well, now you can pair it up to your Pine64 dot, you know, just like your Echo dot from Amazon, but now Pine64. Yeah. Well, well, it's a pine cone. Yeah, well, well yeah. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. You want me there? Yeah, and you put the BL six hundred two in it, so then you have the pine cone in the pine cone. Get some help. <laughs> so I think that's an episode. Um, what are you guys' thoughts? Uh, do you want a, a field server? Or are you guys excited for the pine sound, the pine bud, uh, or, or anything else we talked about? Even uh, Maui shell, because uh, I actually do think Maui shell has potential, unlike Plasma Mobile. Shots fired at Plasma Mobile there. Yeah, I mean, I always fire shots at Plasma Mobile. You know that. But yeah, uh, uh, could you repeat that though? I can't hear you. I'll put in my uh, pine buds so I can hear you. Oh, you you got the early developer sample? Uh, yeah, it's about the size of a house and uh, fits in uh, your ear using a huge adapter. Yeah, totally. If you guys want to talk to us, you can always message us on um, Discord or Matrix. Uh, his name is 33YN2 on both of them, minus Porky of the Pine on both of them. Um, and also we have an email address that I do not see, but I know he does. Uh, what's the email address? We'll put it into a picture on the screen because I... Okay. Uh, I think it's Pine Talk. I'm, Pine I'm too tired right now to remember. Talk. Okay. Um, and then also, yeah, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can comment there. Uh, we do read comments. Um, yeah, we you can definitely interact with us and uh, we will be happy to respond to anything that you have to say. But if, Brian, you don't have anything else, then... Nope, I don't. Till next time.